Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Let's review our primary teeth here briefly before taking a quiz. Remember our eight differences between the primary and the permanent teeth. Number one, that they were smaller in size, generally referred to as being short and squatty because of their short crown. They've got the whitish color, referring to them as milk teeth. They've only got 20 in total number. No mammalons on these teeth, even when they first come in. We've got a larger proportional pulp, and we've got thinner enamel. We've got differences in our root structures. Our root structures being widely divergent, being very narrow from the mesial to the distal, and having a very short root trunk. And then we have this major cervical ridge, a very prominent cervical ridge all the way around the tooth, particularly this buccal cervical ridge on these teeth. We only have two teeth in the primary dentition that are significantly different than our permanent ones, and we'll spend little time on that, on these teeth. That's our first molars, mandibular first molar and maxillary first molar. Now on our maxillary, this is fairly a typical tooth, and actually looks a little bit like a bicuspid. They frequently have one major buccal cusp and one major lingual cusp, and uh, will have somewhat of the H-shaped bicuspid appearance. Because of the atypicalness and the variations in it, it's hard to draw and draw in a very typical pattern. The mandibular is a little easier to draw, and I think before we get into studying the actual detailed anatomy, let's take a couple minutes and draw a little bit of these teeth here. If we were to look at the tooth from a a buckle type of a section. These are the types of things that we would anticipate to see in them. And I'll point them out here in just a, a second. We would expect that our mesial buccal cusp would take up about two thirds of our occlusal width mesially distally, and our distal buccal cusp would be about one-third the distance. We would expect our height of contour on the mesial to be closer to the occlusal surface, our distal surface being a little bit more rounded and having a height of contour a little closer to the cervical. Our mesial surface is quick, frequently quite flat from the height of contour down to the cervical and tapers into a constriction down here. But we've got our heavy buccal cervical bulge on this mesial aspect, which causes our cervical line to come lower towards the roots in this area, and then it tapers up closer to the clusal as it goes to the distal. Our roots are spread basically wide. We've got a very thin mesial distal dimension on our roots, and they extend out beyond the crown. Our root trunk is generally very short in this tooth. Now, if we look at this tooth from the lingual here, we'll find that we've got a little bit of a different type of anatomy on this tooth because we pick up this real sharp lingual cusp, the mesial lingual cusp, which has an unusual, very unusual shape to it. Our cervical line is relatively indistinct here. Let's finish up our clusal here. Actually, we see this buccal cusp in outline, which is a and then we'll catch our roots here. Narrow, widely divergent. The things to point out here again is our same height of contours, relatively flat on the mesial, up close to the occlusal, our distal. Our height of contour is down in the middle third of the tooth, and our distal surface is more rounded as it constricts towards the cervical. Our cervical line is relatively straight. We haven't got any sharp differences. The key thing is this mesial lingual cusp. It has a very sharp rise on this mesial lingual incline, mesial lingual cusp ridge of our mesial lingual cusp. It's very sharp incline, and then it tapers off uh, more gently in the distal lingual cusp bridge here. 
it comes to a very sharp point, most unusual cusp in the primary dentition, but it's located just distal to our mesiobuccal cusp, which is a larger, stronger cusp, not necessarily higher or further from the cervical, but it's a little larger in total dimension. It takes up about, you know, two-thirds of this portion of the tooth. Our distal lingual cusp is a little smaller and located in the distal third of the type tooth here. Got the same basic formations in the root structure here. Let's look at an occlusal view of this tooth. We'll catch our outline form here. We've got basically a rectangular tooth. We've got a rather prominent bulge out here on the mesial buckle, this being the mes mesial here and the buckle. Our cusps we locate with some X's. Our two mesial cusps being located rather close together with our mesial lingual cusp being located a little closer to the distal. Our distal cusps are located quite a ways towards the distal and also towards the buccal and lingual of the teeth. Now if we were kind of sketching our cusp ridges, mesial marginal ridge, and our cusp ridges around this tooth, we come up with a occlusal table which has a peculiar shape in this tooth. It's kind of like a, a bow, a little bit of an off-centered bow tie here. And in this area, we've got a strong ridge that crosses through here. Remember this? This is our transverse ridge. We were to draw in our pits. We've got a mesial pit and a central pit, the central pit being the largest one by far. Sometimes a little bit of a distal pit. Very hard to see and find, really. We have a couple grooves out of this mesial pit, a mesial buckle and a mesial lingual. Got a central groove that actually crosses this transverse ridge a little bit. And our succedaneous tooth that replaces this one, which would be our mandibular first primary or our mandibular first premolar. This groove does not generally cross the transverse ridge, but here we will cross it and it puts a little groove in the ridge and it comes through a central groove back into our central pit. Sometimes a little bit of a groove out to the distal here. But our main grooves out of our central pit are our buccal groove, which actually comes out across the buccal cusp ridge here and traverses down onto the buccal surface. And sometimes you can see a little bit of an indentation in this buccal surface where it's kind of actually shaped the contour of our buccal surface. Lingually here, we're coming out with a lingual groove, which would be our lingual groove coming out here. But that gives us a basic idea of it. Now, on our outline form, we should point out a couple things. We've got a very rounded line angle. This is the same line angle that was rounded in our mandibular first premolars. This is our mesial lingual line angle. Now this is where the tongue lies. We've got a very narrow cuspid tooth in here and a rather broad second primary molar back here. And so this is kind of our transition area. Our line angles on our distal are generally quite sharp, surprisingly sharp. Usually our mesial and buckles are sharper, but our distal line angles are fairly sharp, as is our mesial buckle here. And then we've got this very prominent cervical bulge, our buckle cervical ridge area down through here that should be shown on these teeth. These are the types of things we'd be looking for in a, in a drawing, and I think this will help us to uh, point out these landmarks when we go to the individual teeth. These are models that have excellent anatomy of the deciduous teeth. And if we were to take a little closer look at our maxillary first molar, we have an atypically cusped tooth with two major cusps. Rather easy to identify in so much as it's much broader from mesial to distal across the buckle. And our buckle has this very large prominence, which is this buckle cervical ridge. And it's at the mesial. So we usually can identify this fairly easily from that buccal prominence and our broad mesial uh, diameter across the buckle here. We've got our two main cusps, a buckle, it's actually called a mesial buckle cusp, 
and our mesial lingual cusps. We may have a small distal buccal cusp, and sometimes we'll have a small distal lingual cusp, although not usually found. Basically an H-shaped type tooth. In our outline form, it's got basically the outline of our maxillaries with our height of contour relatively low on the buckle, although we've got the much more prominent uh, cervical ridge here, and in the center of the tooth on the lingual. And of course, the root structure we've gone over with you, the divergence and what have you. I think we have reviewed these primary maxillary molars enough. Let's take a look at a series of these teeth. Actually, these are our maxillary second molars and our maxillary first molars. And I want you to note several things in contrast as we kind of go down the line of these teeth. The difference in size. The difference in size is much greater than that of our permanent molars. Our maxillary first and second permanent molars have actually uh, the same buccal lingual dimension and only a millimeter in the mesial, different, mesial distal dimension difference. But these are rather significantly different in size here. This being more of the bicuspid shape and size. We might look for a oblique ridge. We've indicated that some of these may have an oblique ridge. And actually, we've got one here that shows a little bit of an assemblance of an oblique ridge, which cuts across the crown here. But it's not normally found, and we won't really be too concerned about trying to identify it. In our second molars, of course, we've got very strong oblique ridges, and we frequently will have a uh, fifth cusp on it, or a tendency towards our fifth cusp out on the mesial lingual, our cusp of carabelli. But as you come down here, notice the very significant prominence to this buccal cervical ridge, actually mesial buccal here, because it's right out towards the mesial aspect of these teeth. They should be fairly easy to identify because of this prominence that occurs out in here. And our seconds are almost identical to our first permanent molars, our second primaries. So we can see some of the differences that exist here, size and what have you. Let's look at our mandibulars. We've got a series of them to look at. And again, you may note the rectangularity of these teeth, particularly our first primary molars. Our second primary molars being, again, almost identical to the first permanent. We've got a rather significant difference in size. We have a prominent transverse ridge on our first, which actually divides the occlusal into two major fossas, which can significantly influence our restorative dentistry when repairing or placing fillings in these teeth. We've got the same general importance to our cervical ridge, our buccal cervical roll on the mesial aspect here. You can see the outline form there. But in the mouth, of course, you'll just be seeing occlusals, and uh, this is what we'll have to really identify our teeth from. Now, we talked about the root structure on these teeth and how they were so very widely divergent. If we were to have the crown of a maxillary permanent bicuspid here, Notice that it would fit very easily in this trifurcation of this maxillary molar here. These roots are spread fairly wide, but this is where they generally will grow and come right up in this area underneath our deciduous teeth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.